Mindset, the mindset's the same. Everything stays. Now, now there's, what sucks is we have to do another camp, but it's all good, man. To get that title, that's what I'm gonna have to do. That's what I, I will do. And that's, this is it. December 8th, Toronto, 231, main event. Fight for that title. Brian. You're being perfect for the last one, or are you gonna try yeah, to duplicate that? Yeah, my preparation was amazing. I literally have to duplicate the same thing, or try to, if not fix more things that I wish I could have had time for in the first camp. So now I have time for it in the second camp, which means now I'm just gonna come deadlier. How much effort is it like, was it to have to go through all the way to and everything? <laughs> yeah, it, it sucked uh, because in my mind I was I was there for five weeks. We literally finished doing the open workout. After the open workout, we went to the hotel. We were talking about our our pretty much the rest of the process to cut the weight. We went to the pool to hang out, and we got the call saying that he might not make it. And then maybe two hours later, they said, for sure it's off. So it, the team was running around. We're all like, you know, everyone said, he is going to make it. Maybe it's a mind game. Maybe it's not a mind game. And it, it was true. He couldn't make it. Is it a bit weird being in Vegas, seeing how, you know, this past summer you were supposed to fight, and now you're back here, and, you know, kind of brings back memories, I'm sure, of I was, all the way before. Yeah, I was just walking through the hallways right now, and I was going, I wish I was here for me. Just yeah. for, for my experience, just with my gloves on and my bag, just my headphones on, getting ready to fight. Uh, I think we could have made a cool main event for this one, yeah. you know, but December, December 8th, it's going to happen. Yeah, do you like that being the sort of the spotlight on you for this card now, uh, because you are the main event, not overshadowed by uh, you know, CK and uh, DC, DC from there? No, absolutely, man. Well, last time even, all the numbers dropped once yeah. we, we, we fell off the card, so it goes to show you how much of a draw we are. Now we're the main event, and, and this is it, man. Like, with this fight, I'm excited. Was there any talk of an interim title at all, like just with Max being out and any potential opponents brought your way? No, so we made a, we have an agreement to where December 8th, with or without Max, this fight's gonna happen for the featherweight belt. Who's the, who's the backup there? They talked about replacement. They say they have a replacement. They haven't said the name. I don't know who it is. Um, like I said, I don't care. If as long as for the real featherweight title, then count on me on being there. How likely do you think it is that Max is actually going to make this fight? Because there's a lot of question marks about where his body's at. He's had a lot of issues lately. He's been having a lot of issues. There was the the Frankie Edgar fight where I stepped in to save that card. There was the Khabib incident in New York where I offered to step in as well. They just said yes. Then he stepped in and couldn't make that one happen as well. And then there was ours. The UFC 226 where he had to pull out again. So I don't know what's going on with his health right now or what's happening within his camp, but now I don't care because it's going to happen with or without him. So I'm happy. I, I get what I wanted, which was the title shot. Just on that, are you disappointed that that could be fight didn't come together? And do you sometimes think about what would have happened if Max didn't step up? I mean, and you guys ended up matching up? That would have been, that would have been the matchup, you know, and I wish, I wish that would have happened. Because there's, as a fan, MMA fan, I love the matchup of a, of a, a wrestler with a top game versus the jiu-jitsu with the bottom game. And we're both deadly. It's him from the top, me from the bottom. And it's a war, man. We both, I feel like we both do great with our feet on stand-up. And then when we get to the ground, the fan's going to get a different type of show that it's not normally introduced to in the sport of MMA. Because usually everyone bangs it out. Or if it goes to the ground, it becomes boring. It's the kind of fight that I don't see it go. I don't see it being born no matter what. But we'll see what happens in the future. Brian, when you left Vegas in July, there were some unknowns about whether or not you even get the shot. It might be holding someone else in, fight someone else for the featherweight title. Uh, you were kind of at odds with Dana a little bit. Is everything all patched up now? How Everything's all patched up. Dana, Dana was cool, man. Uh, it's a business, you know. And I, I personally sometimes take it personal. That's just that's who I am. I take it personal, and after the fact, we kept talking, kept in touch, squashed everything out. We're all on good terms, and, and it makes sense to make this the main event. I'm the number one contender, and that, that's what it is. Is this your first time going to Canada? No. Oh. I've been there before for a seminar. Oh, yeah. okay, gotcha. Did you know much about Toronto, though, before taking the fight? No. 
Okay. I mean, I, I went there. I knew it was a beautiful city. Yeah. I went out there. I got to enjoy myself in Toronto. But other than that, yeah. Well, Drake's from there too. He was here this week. I don't no, know. I know. We're talking to, yeah, we're talking to some people right now that that are well known over there. Oh, good. Um, yeah. We, I have, we have some coming for you guys. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, you would make history if you won the title, I don't know if you know this, You're, you would be the only RFA champion to win a UFC title, I don't know if you're aware of that. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Be the first RFA, LFA guy to come, get a bell, and then hopefully keep beating that stake and move up a weight class. You say that you don't really care who the opponent is on the day, as long as you're fighting for the featherweight belt. How does sort of that go into your preparation? Because at this level, when you're fighting for championship belts, it seems like a bit of a tough ask to ask a challenger or a champion to sort of step up uh, on short notice against a completely different opponent without the proper preparation. Yeah, the, the short notice fight's never been an th issue. Like I said, Alfred, I fought Tavares back in the day on two weeks' notice, which was one week of training, one week of media. Uh, Frankie was three weeks, two weeks of training, one week of media. Khabib was six days notice. I, was, I flew right there. I flew out to New York. So it's, it's never been an issue as long as for the, if it's for the right fight. The right fight that I know I can give the fight fans the best show I can, I'll take it. And as in terms of preparation, I don't really train for an opponent. I kind of figure out what they're about and I know what route I'm going to take during the fight. But I always, my, my training camps are structured around me. What can I do to look back at my old fights, get better, train myself to beat myself, and then go in there and do it against someone else?